So the most important thing is what what do what, what do we what what do we say in the morning? Well, we should say, God help me. Uh, first thing in the morning, Catriel. Uh, Hold our knee. Are you? Are no. You? Sh- well, yeah, all of that, but Shema Yisrael. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to kind of throw that one on here. Like, I mean, I hate it when people say blah, 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 and I'm supposed to just go blah, 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 blah. But, you know, you don't know what I'm thinking. But um, Shema Yisrael. And that's the big thing we've got to do is we've got to listen. We've got to listen to the Lord. He'll bring us through all the twists and turns that will bring all of our private paths into one great big path and an exodus out of this country. Um, I, I, I'm going to leave it there and let Catriel speak and um, and uh, 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 share some things. Um, well, we'll, we'll both uh, kind of do a tag team here. Um, so, r- real quick, just a sum, uh, you know, a brief summarization. I think then I'll have I'll I'll ask Roy the same. <clears throat> so, a brief summary of the second Exodus. So, here's according to the, El- uh, the understanding that Elohim has given me thus far. My belief about the second exodus is this, that <clears throat> from all nations, or at least from all continents, Elohim has His remnants. He has His believers. That is, those who believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, as the Messiah, and those who believe in keeping the commandments of Elohim. Now, uh, during some time in the near future, what Elohim is going to do, He's going to take His remnant, and He's going to bring them out from where they are, uh, whether in the midst of judgment or not, I'm not for sure. I'm not for sure. I believe if we're wise, we'll do so before judgment. But he's going to take us, and he's going to. St- they're going to start to form groups of encampments, communal encampments. Uh, and with these encampments, he's going to. Uh, they're going to formulate uh, uh, order. Uh, they're going to be highly organized, and they're going to be just like the first Exodus. Only, you know, it's going to be the second. And these encampments are going to amass and amalgamate into greater encampments. And so as he's, as he's moving in the midst of judgment, moving the encampments together, uh, in the midst of cosmic upheaval, or uh, uh, government uh, chaos, mobs, riots, possibly alien invasion, possibly staged alien invasion, possibly um, robots going awry or coming after us, drone attacks, uh, martial law, uh, you know, you name it, whatever it is. Um, in the midst of this time, as he moves these encampments together, uh, we will all migrate, physically migrate, whether we're going to be using vehicles or not, I'm not for sure. I think we probably are. Um, and, uh, what was that? At first, maybe. At first, maybe, yeah. And, uh, and we're going to migrate to the North Country. Roy, this is big on the North Country, pointing that out. He pointed that out to me. Migrate to the North Country. From there, Elohim is going to gather all of his sheep together. And from the North Country, then we're going to migrate into the land of Israel. So the North Country is that, Poland? What's no, that? It's, it's not Poland. It's, 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 it's north of Lebanon, possibly Syria. Possibly Syria, around by the Euphrates, northern Euphrates. But anyway, so from that, from that, from that point... Uh, we will come back in the land of Israel through the Jordan. So as we left, the prophets in Jeremiah uh, 31 says that as we left, so too we will return only in reverse manner. So, uh, you know, the way the children of Israel left, they actually left two ways. One's far east, another one uh, north, up through the Caucasus. But uh, so we're going to meet in that direction and come back into the land. And then, of course, then begins the age of Yosef. Roy calls it the age of David. I call it the age of Yosef. But, uh, you know, uh, so that's my understanding. So, Roy, in a nutshell, could you please share with us your understanding of how the second exodus is going to happen? Okay, well, um, there, there are a lot of scriptures in the uh, Tanakh about the second exodus. It's actually pages and... When the wind picks up, you got to elevate your voice because you can hear it over here with the wind through the trees. Okay. So, Okay. You pick it up and okay. Right okay. 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 W- when uh, uh, what was I saying? Well, I just miss. I just lost my thread. Second Exodus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, scriptures. Oh my God. Where was I? There, there are pages and pages. Of yeah, that's right. That's right. There's pages and pages. 
there's, there's, there's heaps of chapters uh, all about the regathering of Israel. There's no reason for ignorance. It's just that it doesn't fit our paradigm. We've all been expecting the stuff in Revelation. That's going to happen. But it could be that there's some things that are going to happen before we get there. Now, in the book of Acts, it says he's, we're going to re- Yahweh's going to restore David's fallen tabernacle. And we read that and go, that's nice, and go dum dee dum dee dum dee dum to the next verse. And we don't know what it's talking about. It talks about, in Acts chapter 2, Peter's saying, this is like what Joel spoke of, you know. Um, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. And then he quotes Amos 9. Oh, no, sorry, um, Joel 2. And um, uh, he's put... The, he describes the pouring out of the Spirit of God upon your sons and daughters. And then he goes on a few more verses and said, the uh, sun will turn to darkness, the moon to blood, and there'll be palm trees of smoke. When did that happen in the book of Acts? It says pillars of smoke in the King James. Pillars of smoke. But if you read the uh, Hebrew, it says tamarot shan. Palm trees of smoke. Mushroom clouds. That's the, how I read it. We'll wait and see. We'll find out. We're living in a blessed generation that can make those things happen. And uh, I'm not worried about it at all. And we're so intelligent. Yeah, the Lord said that unless Yahweh had left Israel a small remnant, they would have become in so- uh, as Sodom and Gomorrah. So that we're living in a Sodom and Gomorrah um, period. So what happens to a Sodom and Gomorrah generation? If What was the example? destruction of the city. And how was it destroyed? <laughs> By fire, for fire and brimstone. So that's a what's awaiting the American, Australian and world cities that are given over to that. So the fact that Obama has been, and the Supreme Court has pushed this thing through regarding homosexuality is a wake-up call. And um, so there's going to be a time to get out of Kansas. And uh, you're just going to have to be led by the Spirit. Don't be fearful, but be quietly concerned. (laughs) And seek the Lord. And He'll guide you as He guides us in all the details of our lives. So um, be strong and courageous, and you will inherit the land. And uh, obey the Torah, and we all fall in many ways. But um, we'll we'll get there. We'll get it together. God's going to get us out, as Catriel said. Um, we're going to form into groups and out of necessity we're going to look, be looking after each other and um, you, you've all watched mo- uh, uh, shows like Survivor or these island shows where you're on an island you've got to betray everyone to survive or Big Brother and you've got to do all this politicking to knock each other off that's not how we're going to survive that's how this nation is going to destroy itself Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. It's like the oil that goes down Aaron's head, down his beard, and down his garments to uh, his feet. So uh, the, 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 the Spirit of God, when, when the olives, when we're getting crushed by circumstances, the, the, the olive oil is going to flow. You can't get olive oil out of a non-crushed olive. So the things that are crushing in our life are actually for us. They'll get us down here on our knees. And we'll begin to see our Father's face as we seek Him. And, uh, and that'll be a great day. So uh, um, the, the worst of times is going to be the best of times. I don't know exactly the details of how we're getting out of America and Australia. Oh, no, we've got a lot more. We're going to have to be a lot further than you guys. Um, we'll be walking on water. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I want skis. But anyway, however the Lord works... He's going to bring us home. And the North Country, at the moment, most of us, are like I, I, I know some Hebrew, but not everybody does. And we've got to get to the pl- place where we're not just a ragtag mob of a, a few congregations here and there that don't talk to each other. We've got to get to the point where, and we're starting to get there already, where congregations are starting to talk to each other. Then we've got to get to the stage where we have greater, larger congregations that are uh, looking after each other in a time of anarchy in this nation. Firstly, there's going to be government-sponsored anarchy, FEMA camps, destruction. And we can't do anything about that, but there's a remnant that the Lord will speak to. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Not everyone has ears. Not everyone has ears. 
where I have physical ears, but not everyone hears. But uh, my sheep hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger will they not hear. So God's sheep can hear. So there's much that's called the church that isn't the church. Okay, and that the Lord knows those that are His, and please God, um, save them. I know many Christians that are actually, I know they're my brothers, but they don't get the things I know, and I, I just hope that um, they're the remnant that God will call, because uh, I value their company. So the Lord's going to get us out of this nation through travail. And there's no, we can't avoid the travail, but we can glory in our God and we can see Him do amazing things through our weakness. You know, the New World Order are the best preppers in the world. They've been digging underground bases and putting things up in the sky. They've got machines and they've got technologies and they've got everything that opens and shuts. And our greatest asset is our weakness and, our, and, and knowing that, that we have a mighty God that has everything under control. Amen. You know, so I'm totally looking forward. So Paul says he, he magnified his weaknesses. He was, he was happy for his weaknesses because through his weaknesses he discovered the grace of God. You know, he's shipwrecked three times, uh, bitten by serpents um, and all sorts of stuff. And I've never uh, seen a more positive fella in the, in, in, in the scriptures, uh, except Yeshua himself. Uh, so um, the things that are against us are for us. We're going to come together. We're going to look after each other. As a nation, though, to get together as a nation, before God puts the house of Israel with the house of Judah, he's got, we're going to be a nation. And we're going to, he's going to put us together in the north country, as I understand it from Scripture. There's multiple places where it talks about the north country. And he's actually going to bring us out of the north country through judgment too, sadly. Because the pastors at that time are not listening to the Lord either. The yeah. pastors, uh, uh, many of the churches aren't listening to the Father in some very critical things. And yeah. that's, that's going to cost not only the pastors their lives, but their congregations. That's yeah. how serious it is. So, um, Father, give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, the congregations. Yeah. So that's, that, that's all I, I would say. Um, to we're going to come together as a nation. Before we join with another nation called the House of Judah. And, um, and that's going to be a glorious day. Judah joins with us in the north country, Eretz Zephon. And it's by the Euphrates. And um, uh, it's just, we're just going to cross the ditch and come into Israel itself. So we're not, we're not far away. We, the Judah joins with us. But then we come to the Valley of Jezreel and we join with Judah. Well, how does that work? I thought they joined with us in the north country. Huh? There's some of Judah in Israel already. And they're going to fight for Jerusalem. The modern state of Israel isn't a fulfillment of Scripture as far as, far as the regathering is concerned. But they're necessary because it, out of that secular state will rise a rabbinic religious state that will fight for Jerusalem. And then they will mourn for the one they have pierced. And that's not going to bring about second coming. It's going to bring about the reconciliation of the two houses. And then we've got nothing to argue about. Um, we'll find other things to argue about because the Torah is full of things to argue about. And there's one thing about the house of Israel, they sure know how to argue. But, but may they be happy arguments, Father. And, 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 may we, and may we joy and exult in our God that's brought us home. So uh, that, that's all I really want to share. Yeah. I think that's enough.